Okay, so since uh, college football is officially back in swing, we've just finished our first full week of games with Ohio State beating Virginia Tech last night. Um, I wanted to talk about the playoff system. Now, a lot of people have criticized the current playoff format as being uh, exclusionary for all of the worthy teams because there's only four teams that are invited to play in the college football playoff, and uh, there are some... Um, some people would argue that more than four teams are worthy of playing for the national title, with last year being an example when both Baylor and TCU were not invited to play in the playoff, uh, despite them both being, I think, 12 and no, 11 and 1. Well, they only had one loss. Each of them only had one loss, and I guess Baylor beat TCU, and so people were saying Baylor should have gone in by the head to head, and then there people were saying that TCU should have gone in for whatever reason, but. Um, that was a big argument, and then Ohio State beat both of them out, so the whole point of Baylor versus TCU was eventually irrelevant because they were both left out, and Ohio State got it, and then they eventually won the title. So people said that Ohio State was a good pick since they won the championship. But what I wanted to get out here is there's a proposal by some people, I guess it's not an official proposal, but some people are saying that we should invite only conference champions into the tournament or to the playoffs and I wanted to voice my opposition to this proposal because I think that there are more, more good teams than just the winner of the conference um, and so situations like last year if you say only conference champions then uh, who would you account as the champion of the Big 12 I believe the Big 12 commissioner I think Bob Bowlesby as uh, who, who it is it uh, said that they had co-champions that both Baylor and TCU were co-champions, and people said that he made that announcement so that both of them would be considered for the playoff, but it kind of backfired, and so none of them were, well, I shouldn't say considered, because I'm sure they're considered, but none of them were selected. So <clears throat> I wanted to, you know, voice my opposition to this because I think that it's wrong, because I think that there are situations where there's two teams that are very hard to distinguish between each other, such as Baylor and TCU. I know several years ago we had Ohio State, no, excuse me, um, LSU and Alabama playing in the national championship game. And that game had very bad ratings because people said that, uh, you know, there are two teams from the Southeast, both from the SEC, and they already played each other earlier on in the season with LSU beating Alabama 9-6. to Only field goals were scored, but then, of course, Alabama ran away with it in the title game, and LSU I don't think scored any points unless they scored some a touchdown in garbage time or something, but I'm pretty sure they didn't score anything. So uh, the point... Uh, this video is I wanted to say that this is a bad idea because there are situations like last year with Baylor and TCU where um, there are two teams that are almost indistinguishable from each other as far as their performance and their overall quality. And I think that that's wrong to exclude them. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you only include champions, and that seems to give preference to them, and that seems uh, that would kind of force you to invite the conference champions. And so what if you have a situation where you have a conference champion that won a conference that was very weak that year um, relative to their uh, previous performance, then, then what do you do? Do you still invite them? Um, so I know that there was a, um, a, uh, a tweet yesterday about um, the Ohio State schedule after they played Virginia Tech, and it didn't look too tough. I believe Michigan State was the only team on their schedule that's ranked because if you think about the other teams in the Big Ten, or at least the Big Ten East, um, that are traditionally good. Penn State's one of them, but they just lost to Temple, so they're probably not going to be too much of a threat. Uh, Michigan is historically good, but this is their first year under Jim Harbaugh, so they're not uh, going to be as good as they probably will be in a few years. And then other teams are just not that um, not, uh, not that tough. You know, Indiana is not uh, going to be a very tough game for Ohio State. Um, other teams, I'm trying to think of who else is in the Big Ten, because I'm an SEC fan, being at South Carolina, so I don't know the Big Ten as well as, as people there do. But anyway, my point is, is if uh, Ohio State wins the Big Ten, that uh, by the looks of their schedule, at least the Big Ten East looks like they're down this year, are they going to be invited to the uh, playoffs? Uh, and should they be invited to the playoffs? You know, it seems like they are likely to be invited, especially since they won the championship last year. But um, is even an undefeated Ohio, well, I guess an undefeated Ohio State would probably get in. But say Ohio State goes 11 and one in the regular season, and their only loss is to Michigan State, and then they win the Big Ten championship game, so they're 12 and one going into the playoffs, or at least the playoff um, deliberations, and then they're invited. Do you think that they would be invited, and should they be invited? 
you know, I, I uh, have to wonder if their only win over a top 25 team is against, or no, excuse me, the only game they played against the top 25 team is Michigan State, and they lost that game. So they're only one against top 25 teams. That seems like that's not a very strong resume for the playoff picture. So, um, you know, I guess people could say that, uh, you know, I'm being biased or whatever because I'm uh, an SEC fan being in South Carolina. But, you know, I, I think that, you know, you can look at it objectively and say how many wins does the team have over top 25 teams? And if they have none, uh, you know, I, I think that that's, that's a weak schedule. So, um, obviously, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some uh, comments directed to me. People are going to say, oh, well, whatever. They're going to win more games in South Carolina. They're going to whatever. Their quarterback's better than South Carolina, this and that. So there's going to be some uh, <laughs> there's going to be some trash talk on here. And, and you're welcome to say that. You know, you can, um, uh, you know, point out any observations you have about our team versus your team. I'm not saying that South Carolina is better than Ohio State. Uh, but I am saying that it would seem to me as if they are 12 and one, and their one loss is against uh, the only top 25 team they played during the regular season, and they get invited to the playoffs uh, over another 11 and one team that has a better record against top 25 teams, and that would be um, then that would be a uh, what a bad selection, then that would be a uh, yeah a flaw in the or a mistake in the playoff selection. So. Let me know what you think about the idea of having conference champions only in the college football playoff. If you agree with me, you think that they should um, not restrict the playoff to conference champions, or if you think that they should, that if you should only get in if you win your conference.